Hi, I'm Ruth Prince. I'm the Outdoor Learning Officer of the Water of Leith Conservation Trust. We're a conservation charity looking after the river, the Water of Leith, which starts in the Pentland Hills, southwest of Edinburgh, comes right through the centre of the city and drains into the Firth of Forth estuary at the Port of Leith. Today, we're going to do some freshwater invertebrate kick sampling. If you walk along the river today, you may see um, a kingfisher or a heron or a dipper. If you're really lucky, sometimes on the water of Leith, you might even see an otter. You'll definitely see fish jumping. What you're less likely to see are the thousands of freshwater invertebrates that live just under the surface of the river. They can tell us a lot about the river. Not only are they an important part of the food chain, but also they, um, certain freshwater invertebrates like mayfly nymphs are indicators of how clean or how dirty the river is. For that reason, we call them indicator species. To do your kick sampling, you'll need a bit of basic equipment, not much. The most important piece of equipment is one of these kick sampling nets. It needs to be a net with a flat bottom so it can sit flush against the riverbed. You'll need a tray to put whatever you catch in and some ID guides. Here I've got the simplest guide is you can download from our website, shows you the sort of 15 most common invertebrates you'll find in the river. And then I move upwards to more and more complex guides like um, head, statement keys. But really, when you're looking at these, you're going to need a microscope. There are about 51 different species of mayfly nymphs alone in Scotland. And some of them look very different. And some of them you can only identify down to species level with a microscope. I'm wearing waders, but all you really need is a pair of wellies, so long as they don't have holes in them. I tend to carry with me gloves pretty much at any time of year in Scotland, because if your hands are in and out of the river, they can get cold and it's really nice to be able to put a pair of gloves on afterwards. The best place on a river to river dip is parts of the river that have a stony bottom. Place the net on a flat surface and then start to, um, being careful not to fall over, start to vigorously kick the stones and pull them up with your feet. And so any invertebrates that are living in the, um, underneath the stones will flow into your net and be caught there. Ideally, you kick sample for three minutes, if you can keep going, and then take the contents of your net and carefully empty them into a white tray that you've already filled with water. And now the fun begins, looking at what you've caught. Already I can see um, a couple of different mayfly nymphs looking around, let the sort of little bits of, oh, there's a lovely caddisfly case there, and you can see in the bottom of the frame a little caddis fly making its way across um, the tray. Um, some black fly larva. As the sort of detritus from the end of summer settles, you begin to see a lot of different creatures emerging. It's the end of summer, so a lot of the creatures now living in the river are um, quite small. And um, also the water levels are really, really low because we've had a long, dry summer, which has affected the invertebrates. And oh, there's a leech. Um, we don't really like to see too many leeches in the river, but I'm also seeing a couple of different species of mayfly nymphs um, and caddis flies. And I think earlier on we had a stone fly crawling along the bottom. So this is all really good news too. When you finish looking at what you've caught, empty your tray into the river, carefully making sure that any little invertebrates that are hanging on to the side of the tray make their way back into the water. Ecologists all over the world use kick sampling to determine the ecological status of a river. There are two main kinds of pollution that might affect a river. There's diffuse pollution, which might be something like um, fertilizer running off um, from a field through the rainfall into the river, or point source pollution, which is much more likely on the water of Leith to be something like a cracked sewer pipe. When sewage or any organic substance, even grass clippings, enter a river, 
being organic, the bacteria move in to break it down. Those bacteria use up the oxygen in the river. This is called creating a high biological oxygen demand or BOD. When there's a high BOD, there's just not enough oxygen for the other creatures like invertebrates or fish to thrive. Because invertebrates are so small, they're the first creatures to be affected by a high BOD. With climate change, we are expecting a greater number of storm events and higher temperatures in the river. If you have higher temperatures in the river, that affects the life cycles of the creatures that live there. With biological field studies surveying what's living in the river, we know the baseline. So when changes happen, we know they've happened. So wherever you are, get out on your local river and find out more about the fantastic creatures that live just beneath the surface.